Raymond Benson is the best-selling author of more than 40 books, ranging from thriller and suspense novels to media tie-ins to the Black Stiletto series to James Bond novels. Benson was living in New York, composing musicals and directing plays when a conversation with friends led to a new career. In the early 80s, I was living in New York City. I was in theater. I was a theater major. I was directing plays and musicals and composing musicals. Uh, really, that's what my heart was set on at the time. And um, oddly, I was sitting with some friends. Uh, we were sitting around a table and the question came up, what would you write if you had to write a book? And we all gave an answer and it came to me and I said, well, you know, I think I'd like to write a, an encyclopedic coffee table book about the history of James Bond because there isn't one and I, I want one. <laughs> and they all kind of went, well, you know a lot about James Bond. Why don't you do it? And I'm, I, I just kind of, something I'd never thought about. And uh, so I, uh, I talked to a friend of mine who had just published a joke book. <laughs> And I said, well, how did you do that? And he introduced me to an editor at a publisher and I talked to her about my idea. And she said, well, you need to write a proposal. And she told me what to do, put to in the proposal. So I went home, I wrote a proposal, sent it to her. I got a contract overnight to write this book. And it took me three years. I went to England to research it. I met members of Ian Fleming's family and his business people and friends and colleagues. Um, and so we got along, the book came out, The James Bond Bedside Companion, uh, was published in 1984. And that kind of established me as a sort of a Bond expert. And, you know, I kind of, I, I was constant contact with the estate and the, the, the literary people. And it was 10 years later in 1995 that uh, John Gardner, who was writing the books before me, um, decided he wanted to stop. And the Fleming people called me out of the blue and just said, how'd you like to give it a shot? When I got the gig, we had a sit down to talk about, you know, what direction we wanted to go. Um, this was just as Pierce Brosnan was, re they were rebooting Bond with Pierce Brosnan and Goldeneye had just come out and was, was a huge hit. Um, we had talked about, you know, should we maybe set the books back in the 60s or 50s? and. But they decided because Goldeneye was so successful that maybe we should stay in sync with the films. Uh, in fact, let's make M a woman in your books and uh, kind of make them more like, you know, the, the movies that they're being made uh, at the time, contemporary. So that's what that was my directive. Otherwise, I was completely free to do what I wanted. And I made the point to uh, uh, say, you know, I really want my Bond to be the guy from the 50s and 60s, even though he's in the 90s. And, you know, I want all of his vices intact. And they said, well, if you can pull that off, go for it. You know, he might be a little anachronistic in the, in the 90s, but uh, that's what makes him stand out. That's who his character is. You know, that's, that's why he's called a misogynist dinosaur, you know. <laughs> Once his Bond contract ended, Benson decided it was time to move in a new direction. I had to then reinvent myself. I had to start basically from scratch. I had to get a new agent. And, um, you know, there, there was some pressure from some circles. Why don't you just continue doing spy novels, you know, create your own spy and blah, blah, blah. And, and I just didn't want to do that. I, I felt like I had done Bond. That's the pinnacle of spy, you know, why would I want to create some, it, it would just seem like I was capitalizing on it or, or, you know, copying it, or it wouldn't be a very original, I, mean, I wouldn't think. I was more interested in like Hitchcockian kind of suspense, um, more personal, real, you know, everyday people suddenly in extraordinary circumstances, you know. Th those kind of stories. And that's what I wanted. And it, you know, it took a while to kind of get a foothold. Uh, and finally I did. Um, but also I was doing tie-in work, a lot of tie-in work where, you know, I worked for Tom Clancy a couple of times and did a couple of Metal Gear Solid books and things like that. And those were very, you know, lucrative and helped pay the bills and stuff. But, um, you know, and then once I got into uh, the Black Stiletto, um, that, I think that's my magnum opus, my five book serial, The Black Stiletto. 
Ever since The Black Stiletto, I've been doing standalone novels. Um, you know, The Secrets on Chicory Lane, In the Hush of the Night. My latest novel, The Mad Mad Murders of Marigold Way, is uh, one of my favorites. It's, it's a dark comedy uh, that takes place at the beginning of the pandemic. And it's a murder mystery, but it's it's it sort of has a Coen Brothers feel. You know, it's it's very, it's got a sly humor and and uh, and also it's it's heavily inspired by uh, Thornton Wilder. Uh, so it's, it's as if uh, Thornton Wilder wrote Our Town at the beginning of the 2020 uh, pandemic. And it takes place in a suburb. It actually takes place in my hometown, suburban street. But I changed all the names to protect the guilty. Benson's approach to writing is similar to his approach as a theater director, filled with preparation. I always outline. Um, I'm, you know, you're either a plotter or a pantser. I'm, I'm definitely a plotter. And, you know, when I was doing the Bonds, which were my, really my first novels, I was required to do it. So that kind of trained me into do it. But in my the my theater background also trained me to be prepared. Uh, I was a directing major, and the professor had us do these elaborate preparations for a play that we were going to direct where we analyzed all the characters and the motivations and the beats and the rhythms and the tempos and the subtext and all that, you know. Um, and it really taught me how to, how to tell a story. My outlines uh, are really prose treatments of what the novel is going to be. You know what a storyboard is for movies. It's the prose equivalent of a storyboard. And each block paragraph represents a chapter of what's going to happen in that chapter. And by doing, you know, a 20 page outline, um, you can you have the room to play with it and change things or throw things out without throwing out 100 pages or 50 pages of, of stuff that you go, oh, that wasn't right. You can get it right in the outline. And it doesn't mean I'm married to the outline. While I'm writing, I could still play with it and improvise, but, but it gives you a guideline. It gives you a blueprint, you know? You don't build a building without blueprints. And I, I think of writing a novel as building a novel. Benson also tries to work a bit of his humor into his writing. Well, I, I've always liked humor, um, and I've never thought of myself as a comedian or anything, but I, I think I have a sly humor. And, you know, I'm a big film buff. I, I, I taught film history at a college for many, many years. So, you know, my, my knowledge of, like, the Coen brothers, for example, um, is, is pretty extensive. Uh, you know, Stanley Kubrick, uh, if you look at all of his movies, there is a dark humor in everything he does, even even something like 2001 A Space Odyssey, you know, the, uh, there is some sly humor, like when the guy's looking at the toilet and it's like 10 big technical instructions of how to use the toilet, you know, that that's funny. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I like I like irony, you know, um, and irony is hard to uh, define, but you know it when you see it. BCPL spoke with Benson at the Creatures, Crimes, and Creativity Con, an annual gathering of writers and fans of writing. The 2023 con will feature keynote speakers Jeffrey Deaver and Nancy Holder, and details can be found at creaturescrimesandcreativity.com.